Hello and welcome back to the channel for another College TF review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Top Gun Transformers Collaborative Maverick. Um, I got mine over on Hasbro Pulse, uh, he's available there now, and this is the um, second issuing of this figure. This is the 2022 version, um, and there was also a 2020, 2020 version, 2021 version, something like that. But that the first version came with a volleyball, whereas this version does not. Other than that, that is the only um, difference between the two figures. So yeah, you can go check out Hasbro Pulse for uh, if you want to pick this guy up. The link's in the description below. And also be sure to check out All Time Toy Store for your other Transformers and Star Wars needs. So again, this is a uh, Transformers and Top Gun collaborative, um, and it is a, a figure depicting, I guess, Maverick from Top Gun, um, but more noticeably, or uh, more, uh, you know, what's uh, more visible in this figure, I guess, is his alt mode, right? What's more important, that is, of uh, Matt, the jet Maverick flies um, in the first Top Gun movie, that being an F-14 Tomcat. So first, let's take a look at the box. And it is a pretty cool looking box. You know, you got an aircraft carrier there in the background. They do kind of get like a runway scene in picture there. And they do, the jet is propped in a pretty cool angle um, in here. It's like, it's uh, as if he's uh, passing the tower. It's a nice looking box. Got Maverick there. Uh, all the squadron insignia. Some cool little detailing and riveting detailing and some pro more product shots on the back. And yeah, there's your collaborative logo. More than meets the eye, 2022 Transformers. Oh so yeah, that is it for the packaging. And now into the figure himself. So we'll start off with a look at um, the one other accessory that isn't integrated into the jet mode here that comes with Maverick, and that is his motorcycle from the first movie. Uh, this has been painted very nicely, and it's pretty nicely molded overall. I don't really like that it's permanently affixed to the stand. Um, it would have been nice if it had like rolling wheels and all that, but it is quite tiny, as you can see. So, yeah, nice random accessory. I don't have any use for this. It's really tiny, too, so that's a bit annoying, but it's there. Um, here is the figure himself. So one thing to keep in mind with the figure is... Due to accessories like this, it does boost his price point from that even from a Voyager. I think he comes in um, around the $45 mark over on Hasbro Pulse. So, you know, he's even more than your standard Voyager class, even though we'll get into some comparisons, he is just a Voyager figure. Um, and engineering wise, he's not that complicated. So, but we'll get into that in a little bit. And looking at the jet mode here, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not a big fan of the deco they got going on this guy. <laughs> Overall, it looks really beaten. Um, I'm wondering if it's actually supposed to be more of an impression of the Tomcat that he flies that Maverick and um, uh, Bradley fly back in the second movie, uh, that being Top Gun Maverick, as opposed to the original Top Gun, as they do fly in a secondhand F-14, <laughs> well-used one, but still pretty nice looking. I mean, I think they nailed alt mode overall in terms of the design, it, it packs away really nicely. Very nicely. The only thing I don't like is the landing gear. So the front landing gear, that looks good, folds up very cleanly. Now, there aren't actually any instructions for back landing gear in the packaging. Um, and so the one improvisation you can make, which I think is the intention, is these are actually the heel spurs in robot mode and you can, they just stow away like that and you can use them as landing gear. So that's what I tend to do. They really don't look good at all, and it would have been nice if they could have integrated some more, some rear landing gear on the jet mode, but with everything stowed, I mean, this looks pretty amazing. It looks really sick in the packaging, that's for sure. And you've got some nice missiles molded in. These are separate parts, so you can pop them off, um, but you can transform them, transform this figure with them still on. Then these are actually pretty neat. This is kind of like a gimmick taken from some of the Bayverse Optimus Primes in a way. These are his blasters. So the fuel tanks just come off and you fold, flip these out and it forms his gun. Whoops. And that has been sculpted pretty nicely. A little bit of sculpting there, but I think this is a cool accessory. Definitely a cool way to give him his weapons. And he does have two of them, of course, which he can't hold in robot mode. Flip those out. Again, they're exactly the same on each side, so it doesn't matter where you attach them. 
But yeah, very nice. We got nice sculpted in detailing in the cockpit there, the two seats. We get Lieutenant Pete Mitchell and Lieutenant Nick Bradshaw, that being Goose and Maverick from the first Top Gun movie. Um, so just some nice, you know, marker lights and stuff throughout. Um, some some of the warning labels, not all of them. There's no like intake or, um, you know, no step warnings, which would have been nice to see, especially at a figure at this price point. And then you have a VF1 there on the tail and nice engine detailing. But overall, the sculpting on this looks fantastic. Another feature you have in uh, jet mode here is you can have either the wings swept back or out. So this would be, you know, your cruising mode landing. Um, and then this would be high speed. So definitely very nice looking jet mode. I think this is definitely one of the best jet modes we've seen from a mainline transformer potentially ever. Um, and it would be, it'd be really awesome to see. Um, I know Hasbro doesn't have the license to any of the Macross series, but to this mold is pretty much ripe to become a Veritech. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So now let's get him transformed into robot mode. So to begin with, um, we do want to leave the wings back as they will stay like that in robot mode. And that is up to your personal preference, but we want to take the arms and disengage them from the tabs here. Just kind of lift them up out of the way for now. Then we want to separate the legs. So to do that, we kind of want to drop them down ever so slightly to disengage them from the tabs. And then we want to separate them from this middle section. So let's pull it away like that and just pull down, it comes off. Nice and easily, and everything in the jet mode does tab in very securely, um, but not overly tight. It's definitely a well-balanced figure in that regard. And then we just want to start pulling all this down, come to the nose cone, just want to flip that up, stick it in back like that, and just pull this whole section down like this. And we get some tabs here on the landing gear that this whole section tabs into. And you'll notice that these little pieces fan out as you tab in, so that's kind of a neat detail. And then we can just bring the nose cone over top here. Doesn't really tab in all that securely to anything. Um, it just does kind of rest there on his back. But the legs do tab in fairly securely. We want to come in and collapse up the horizontal stabilizers here. Um, we can flip out his feet. So to do that, you want to again lift up these panels. And now instead of just taking, we do want to pull the heel spur out, of course, and that clips over the engine. And then we want to pull out his whole toe section. It can be a bit tricky, but just get your finger in there, pull it out. And there you have his one foot done, collapse that back down. Same thing, of course, on the other side. Pull down the heel spur, flip out the toe, collapse that down. So now the legs are complete. Now for the upper body. So what you want to do is you want to start with the arms up here. Uh, we can actually, before we do that, we can actually just go ahead and collapse this piece down. And there is a little tab here that goes into a little slot. It actually holds remarkably securely um, for it being only a one tab and slot connection. It's very tight there. So that's very nicely done. Then there's two points of rotation up here. So first we want to rotate at the top section here. And then we want to rotate at the bottom and just bring this all the way around like that. And it does tab into place. And then we want to pull out the shoulders here like that. So we just pull this section out. Same thing on the other side. Pull this section out. Rotate these around like that. And then we do want to take, we will need to rotate these missiles around as well. But before we collapse this top section, we want to come over here and we need to bring these little wing pieces up. And there you see the missiles are now facing down. So you just, I like to just rotate them around. This is up to your personal preference. But I rotate them, rotate them around like that. And now we can just bring this whole section down. This is very similar, I would say, to um, the original uh, Jetfire figure, which is just based off of a, a Macross figure, of course, and so, you know, the head just kind of pops out there on that section, and we do get a double hinge here, and all this just hinges inwards, just want to make sure the arms are out of the way, so we can collapse the whole backpack section in, and up, and then we want to come to this piece here, and fold it down in front, like that, and then we can collapse his head back down, 
there. And for some finishing touches, it just releases shoulder pads there. They actually do tab in for jet mode. Rotate his arm around, and of course, flip out his hands. Like that. Same thing on the other side. Up, shoulder pad, rotate the arm, bicep, and pull out the hand. And that should do it for Maverick in his robot mode. And so overall, um, I think this figure looks okay. Um, it's definitely not the greatest, but I picked him up really just for his alt mode. I'm a big, for me, a transformer has to be good in both, both modes. It's the whole point of a transformer, in my opinion, is that it has good robot mode and a good alt mode. It's a robot in disguise, so it should look like that. And I think this guy, like his, his, as I said, his alt mode looks fantastic aside from the slightly strange paint deco. Um, and overall the paint, the overall plastic is kind of, so you can kind of see it. You can kind of see through the plastic. Um, just due to the nature of how thin it does get at the back, but it isn't like by any means brittle. It is a flexible plastic. So he is a fairly durable figure. He's definitely very playable. Um, although I will say I do have some problems with him here in robot mode. That being that the back section on my copy, at least this doesn't really tap in at all. It just kind of flaps around, which is a bit annoying. Um, so like, you know, just lift him up. That just, <laughs> of course, it flaps around like that. I haven't, I'm, maybe I transformed him wrong. Um, let me know down in the comments if you think I did something wrong here. Although looking at him, looks like I did forget to actually shift the shoulders up. Let's see, does that lock it in? Oh, there we go. That locks it in. So never mind. It's just a little trick in the transformation here. You have to make sure the shoulders do overlap on this back piece, and then it does actually lock in very securely. Look at that. So yeah, so, so that does lock in, but his robot mode is a little bit flimsy. I mean, there's a lot of big gaps in him, right? Like that, that doesn't look too great. And then of course up top, you have all these gaps here. Um, so that's definitely not the greatest. And this piece doesn't actually lay flush in any way on the cockpit. You either angle it forward or angle it backwards or just somewhere in between. Um, it doesn't actually go down far enough to lay over top of the cockpit, which is a bit annoying. And then in terms of joint quality, he is pretty good. Everything, he can hold a pose, though his feet are a bit tiny. Um, though I, I'm okay with that given the way, the way he transforms and how good his alt mode is, um, I'm okay with that compromises. He does stand and you can put him in a pose. So just bring him in here so you can see some of the face sculpt detailing there. So kind of a neat look. It's like a, you know, obviously looks like a fighter pilot helmet. Yeah, it's Maverick's helmet, but then has a stylized robot face mask. I definitely do like the look of that. And then otherwise, you know, the painting and everything is the same as in jet mode. You don't really see anything new here. So, same deal, going all the way down. It does look a little bit strange, you know, the way the legs are completely clean, and then you have all of that weird paint on the back. But I still do really like this figure. So in terms of articulation, he does have a very stiff ball joint at the head. Um, it does not, at least on my copy, he cannot rotate past that degree, though I don't think you need him to be an owl and rotate much past that, so that's good enough. Um, you can get him looking up to a pretty good degree and he can look down, so pretty good out of that ball joint. Then at the shoulders, we can get not quite 360 just due to the nature. I mean, I guess, yeah, if you hinge his arm out of the way, you can do a full 360, even with these tiny little shoulder pads, which also do look a little strange in my opinion. I'm not sure if you would have been better without them or uh, maybe just bigger shoulder pads. <laughs> it just do look a little bit strange. His arms are a little bit skinny too. Then we do get, uh, of course, uh, upper bicep rotation here, which does the full 360. And then we do get a very nice range of motion there at the elbow, right, way past 90. Um, unfortunately, this whole cavity here is hollow. And given that he is more expensive than a Voyager, I would have liked if they could have filled that in. But again, because of how complex, uh, well, how, of how clean his, ro his jet mode is, I'm actually okay with them having that hollow space. It's just more a matter of the price point. Uh, I think if this were like a, you know, $30 figure, like a normal Voyager class, then it would be totally reasonable. But being, you know, $10 more, I'm not sure if that price difference is necessarily worth it, given like, you know, you have all that hollowing in there too, as well on the inside of the arm. Now, that being said, it does have some molded in detail, but still, they did cheap out a little bit there on overall on this figure for the price point. Then there is no kind of waist rotation or anything given the nature of the transformation, but you can kick forward to a pretty good degree and backwards 
you know, the, the wings do actually, you know, you can of course move these however you want. So you can have them like a, a jetpack if you want, um, but the wings also do not hinder that motion. So very nice range of motion there. And he can do the splits. He actually does have nice ratchet joints here. So you can do the split. Now you do kind of have to either you have to rotate the thigh like that or just move the wing up to allow clearance for those, um, the, for the tails. And then you can get nice 90 there out of the knee. And then of course he does have the ankle tilt, though not to a very great degree. I would say if you want to get him to some more aggressive poses, it does become a little bit restrictive how narrow these feet are. And then, you know, you kind of lose the support of the tail, um, depending on how you try and support him. But overall, I, I actually do very much enjoy this figure. And then uh, there isn't anything at the wrist other than the hinge down, but that can be useful depending on if you give him some other weapons or whatever pose you're trying to put him in. And so he does also have ports throughout. Oh, sorry, there's also a thigh rotation. I'm not sure if I should that, but he does also have a thigh rotation up there, of course. So then there are ports, of course, throughout, so you could mount, you know, it's mainly just for the jet mode. He is pretty clean otherwise, you know, these are just to mount, of course, the gun fuel tanks um, in jet mode. And then although other than that, I don't think there are any other five millimeter ports other than the hands. So, and then of course the ones back here holding the missiles and you could, I guess you could have them hold the missile. Um, it's the whole, this whole piece it doesn't look very good. <laughs> That's probably about as good as you can get with the missiles. So I definitely wouldn't use them in that scenario. And I think they do look pretty cool on his back like that. And you don't actually have to ever pull them off. So. That is pretty neat, but he can, of course, hold his guns, which I do think look pretty cool. Again, I, I, I do like the style transformation where everything integrates into the alt mode very seamlessly. So there is Maverick with his guns. And I think he does look pretty, pretty cool. Um, I really do like his alt mode. I mean, I think that's the saving grace of this figure is how how well done the F-14 is. Um, I mean, they kind of, <laughs> they messed it up a little bit with the paint, but I still think it is definitely worthwhile if you're a, a big fan of Jet Transformers or F-14s, or if you're a big fan of the Top Gun movie, of course, I think this is a big, definitely a must buy. Um, but for, you know, general generations, um, Hasbro Transformers collectors, I don't think this is a must, must buy at all. Um, this is really only for those Top Gun fans or who, anyone who likes um, the design of this figure. And so, yeah, again, please go. If you want to pick him up, check out Hasbro Pulse. Uh, he is still available. And thanks for watching. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel um, to keep these reviews coming. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.